This is February the 21st, 2021. My name is Kevin Mulqueen. I'm now going to recite a blues song which I've written called Old Swinford Hospital Blues. Old Swinford Hospital is a boys' school in Stourbridge in the West Midlands. I was an English teacher there, second in the department, um, between 1975 and 1985. I'm now retired from full-time teaching. I've taught at many schools, um, but of all the schools I've taught at, Old Swinford Hospital is the one I have the strongest memories of. Why is that? Um, it was my first school, made an indelible impression because of that. Um, I was there for 10 years. Seven of those years I was a boarding master. Being a boarding master was tough. Um, you, you had to teach for five and a half days a week and then you had to do boarding duties on top of that. Anyway, I've got some very strong memories of Old Swinford Hospital. Some of them really good and some of them not so good. I've written about it fairly extensively on the internet. You can read my blogs if you want. Just put in Kevin Mulqueen and it'll probably come up. Um, this blues I've written um, it starts off about me, and then it's about the teachers I taught with. Um, I've written stanzas about all the most memorable teachers. Okay, well, I hope you like it. I hope you think I haven't been too harsh. Maybe I have. Some of the teachers are dead. I've criticised some teachers, but I think they deserve the criticism I give them. Right, here goes. Old Swinford Hospital Blues. Woke up this morning, old Swinford's on my mind. Yes, Lord, I woke up this morning, old Swinford on my mind. A quirkier old school would be awful hard to find. For ten long years, old Swinford was my school. Yes, for ten long years, Lord, old Swinford was my school. A rich and chequered decade, sometimes pleasant often cruel. The borders were unruly, always giving grief. The borders were unruly laws, always giving grief. Quitting Founders Building was such a big relief. Yeah. Duty days were murder, dinner time the worst. Yes, duty days were murder, dinner time the worst. The boys behaved like savages. I felt that I was cursed. Yes, those borders were a handful, gave me a torrid time. Those borders were a handful, Lord, gave me a torrid time. But using corporal punishment was, I think, a crime. For talking after lights out, I'd slipper naughty boys. Yes, for talking after lights out, I'd slipper naughty boys. A rather brutal punishment for just a little noise. Saturday morning was a killer, an extra day at school. Oh, Saturday morning was a killer, an extra day at school. Ten years of shortened weekends, I must have been a fool. The relail was a godsend, Bathams kept me sane. Yes, the relail was a godsend, Bathams kept me sane. Those happy boozing sessions soothed my worried brain. The teachers were a mixed bunch, no great shakes at all. The teachers were a mixed bunch, no great shakes at all. The good, the bad, the ugly, sometimes the odd screwball. Peter Davis was a strange man, he battered boys each day. Yes, Peter Davis was a strange man, he battered boys each day. Why he gloried in chastisement, I really couldn't say. Laurie Benj was a Lothario, smooth and debonair. Yes, young Benj was a Lothario, smooth and debonair. His knack for pulling tasty chicks was way beyond compare. Lance Naylor was a tough guy, respected and ice cool. Oh, Lance Naylor was a tough guy, respected and ice cool. A first class history teacher, a credit to the school. Dickie Dewar was an egghead, a bigger brain would be hard to find. Yes, 
sticky jewer was an egghead. A bigger brain would be hard to find. His most notable achievement was almost winning mastermind. Ray Milner was a small man with a penetrating voice. Oh, Ray Milner was a small man with a penetrating voice. Bend over, little boys, he'd bleep. They did. They had no choice. Clive Williamson was a midget. They called him Mini Man. Yes, Clive Williamson was a midget. They called him Mini Man. The tiniest metalwork teacher since metalwork teaching began. Mike Beale was large and lumbering. Rugby was his game. Oh, Mike Beale was large and lumbering. Rugby was his game. They called him the Honey Monster, a cruel but apt nickname. Keith Longstaff was a scholar, a very clever chap. Keith Longstaff was a scholar lord, a very clever chap. But when it came to teaching French, he was absolutely crap. Poor Neville was a dead loss with no control at all. Oh, poor Neville was a dead loss with no control at all. The boys would bait and mock him inside the dining hall. Dave Griffiths was a cocky guy, as a sportsman much admired. Yes, Dave Griffiths was a cocky guy, as a sportsman much admired. But his rural science teaching left much to be desired. Krukowski was the head of maths, a fearsome martinet. Oh, Krukowski was the head of maths, a fearsome martinet. He'd yell at boys in a Polish voice, which I never will forget. Ben Curtin was a macho man, a golfing devotee. Oh, Ben Curtin was a macho man, a golfing devotee. A mathematics teacher, and not my cup of tea. But his golfing partner, Dennis, dubbed Shunny by the boys. Yes, his golfing partner, Dennis, dubbed Shunny by the boys, was relaxing and congenial. He had calmness, he had poise. Ken Eisen had a ruddy face and directed the cadets. Oh, Ken Eisen had a ruddy face and directed the cadets. His diet consisted mainly of booze and cigarettes. Pete Mansell loved his Mozart and his pot of tea. Yes, Pete Mansell loved his Mozart and his pot of tea. His massive house on Hagley Rose became a second home to me. Harry Johnston was the head of science and ran a boarding house. Or oh, Harry Johnston was the head of science and ran a boarding house. But it was his wife Betty who always wore the trousers. Bo Kennedy was a droit witch man who enjoyed a beer or three. Yes, Bo Kennedy was a droit witch man who enjoyed a beer or three. A man who brooked no nonsense. His domain was chemistry. Brooke Feather was obnoxious. He had no saving grace. Oh, Brooke Feather was obnoxious. He had no saving grace. Arrogant, spiteful, hated. I should have punched him in the face. Phil Price, he was a Welshman, a legend in his time. Yes, Phil Price, he was a Welshman, a legend in his time. Astute and self-effacing. His teaching was sublime. Christian Brooks was hirsute, known for his caustic wit. Oh, Christian Brooks was hirsute, known for his caustic wit. He could smell from a great distance the odour of bullshit. Bob Woods, the head of English, had a flair for doing plays. Yes, Bob Wood, the head of English, had a flair for doing plays. His mastery of theatre deserves the highest praise. Jim Prince was an old gentleman. The students called him Poke. Oh, Jim Prince was an old gentleman. The students called him Poke. Benign, begowned and bookish. A very decent bloke. Hitler was the deputy head. Charlwood, his real name. Yes, Hitler was the deputy. Charlwood, his real name. The students used to sweat and quake when into class he came. Old Grinner Shepherd hired me at the end of his long reign. 
Yes, old Grinner Shepherd hired me at the end of his long reign, a relic of a bygone age. Will we see his like again? Along came New Broom Potter, the saviour of the school. Along came New Broom Potter, the saviour of the school, and turned old Shepherd's pig's ear into a shining jewel. Well, I woke up this morning, old Swinford on my mind. Yes, Lord, I woke up this morning, old Swinford on my mind. A quirkier old school would be awful hard to find.